Hi, my name is Rich. This is um, a first in what should be a series of uh, fly tying videos. I'm a member of East Jersey Trout Unlimited in uh, northern New Jersey. And I'm one of several people who teaches fly tying classes there. So I'm going to start with something really simple for the first fly. Um, this I think of as a jeweled caddis. If you look at it, it'll look very familiar. Um, it imitates the um, what some people call the green rock fly. Um, it's a free living green caddis. Uh, it's Rakophila. Um, very common in any rocky stream. Um, they're all over the place. They're very effective. Um, and as you see, it's tied with glass beads. Um, almost any soft tackle for legs and then a dark dubbing. Um, you can tie them in any color you like, but the green is particularly effective. Um, this one's tied on a size 14 check nymph hook. Um, curve hooks work much better. Um, let me show you kind of how, how you would go about tying this. Um, and let me pop this one out. Now, in order to tie this, you need to first thread the beads onto your hook. Now, I find the most, the easiest way to do this is using bead tweezers. Um, you notice they, they basically hold unless you open them. Um, so otherwise, small beads will end up all over the floor. Um, so it's hard to do this in front of the camera. So I'm putting them on down below. Let's see if I can't get it done. No, it's not going to work very well in front of the camera. So I'm going to put on for a size 14 hook like this, five of these beads will make up the um, abdomen of the fly. Whoops, there goes one. Okay, so let me put the hook in the vise. And I'm going to put it in with the eye pointing slightly downward, just because it will be simpler that way. It will be simpler that way to get everything in place. So, notice I have all the beads, so they're slipped towards the eye, so now I can put on the thread, which I'm going to put on sort of in the middle of the bend. And the trick here is you have to, of course, keep the beads from flying off the back of the hook. Um, now, first rule for tying these is you definitely would prefer to be tying these on a barbless hook. Getting beads past the barb can be difficult, sometimes even if you mash down the barb. Um, these beads are a size 11, sometimes called 11 aught, um, basically 11, 1 eleventh of an inch in theory, although they're not always that consistent. So they're a little over 2 millimeters in size. Now you can buy beads either by millimeter size or by the, the system with... Um, with, um, I'm sorry, the syst either by millimeters or by the system of either size 11 or 10 or 9 or whatever, and then, or something with the aught, um, which are basically giving you fractions of an inch. Um, so now, to keep the beads from flying off, you can either build up a large um, thread bump at the very back, or in this case, I'm just building it up with a... Um, a dubbing very similar color to that of the beads. Um, and then I'm going to throw a few half hitches in, just enough to hold it in place, and they'll be very safe. No need to put any head cement or anything else on those, um, because they will be very well protected by the beads. So slide the beads up, open up, and rotate the hook around to a more normal position. So now I have just enough room for the body and any legs. Now, you can tie these. Uh, if you want to make them a very good imitation, you would actually have very short legs on these. I tend to prefer a slightly longer leg 
just because it um, it gives a little more movement to the fly. Um, so I've got here a little bit of a soft hackle feather from a hen back and I will peel off the fuzz at the base and then I'm going to make a V out of this so I'm going to pull off just enough of the fiber pulling it back that will be the legs I'm going to use and then excuse me while I drop this down I'll clip off the tip so now I just have those fibers and I'll pull them back again I'm going to just have those fibers after I've cut the tip out so I have a V and then I'll just rotate the vise so that I can lay that on the bottom of the fly pardon my fingers here for a moment and then bind it down on the bottom but I rotate it just so I could see what I was doing and clip off the excess and everything else after this is dubbing and of course I managed to clip my thread as we've all done. So let me clean that up. So now it's just a matter of dubbing. Now all of these um, Rakafla have uh, with the green bot with the green abdomen, the thorax and the head are brown. So whatever brown dubbing suits you. Um, you can use something with a little more flash, something a little duller. I'm going to use my fingers here to help hold the uh, the legs in position and get a little more dubbing. But the main thing is here is brown in front, green in back. Pull everything back to bind down. Now I find the easiest way on a small fly to whip finish involves putting the head cement on the thread. then it's simple to then just whip finish and that binds everything down in place. Much easier than trying to get in and not get any head cement where you don't want it. So clip that off and you're done. Now in this case I have a little bit of extra flash out the back. I can easily clip that off now with this instead of putting the legs on if you wanted it to be more authentic you know a little closer to the um the the actual insect you could just pick out the dubbing a bit and that would probably give you enough leg just from the picked out dubbing because the rhyacophila tend to have very short legs um so it's a very simple fly the fish like them they're quick and easy to tie. The nice thing is the glass beads give them just enough weight to help sink them. So five of these roughly two millimeter glass beads will give you about the same sink rate as one two millimeter brass bead. Um, so um, they sink fairly well, um, but not so much that they're plunking on the water when you cast them. Um, but as I said, I've had success with these in New Jersey, success with these up in Maine. It's a very simple, think of it almost like a guide fly. You can tie up a dozen of them in a short period of time um, and they catch fish. Uh, as I said, this is uh, what I hope will be the first in a series of fly tying videos for East Jersey Trout Unlimited. Um, and think of it as not as and I'm showing you what we can, what you could be learning in one of our fly tying classes. So I hope this is useful to you. 
Um, I appreciate any comments people have. And I'm looking forward to our next video. Thank you very much.